Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and in this video I'm going to use this simple pipe bending tool to bend the top rail bars from a chain link fence into hoops that we can use for cold frames and greenhouse structures. This type of structure will be like a middle cost type unit, that PVC little structure that I had built over there for the propagation series last year is a very, very low cost unit for that PVC, but that PVC doesn't last forever. The sun eventually breaks it down, starts to break apart. These hoops right here, I've had for 15 years, as long as the snow doesn't crush them, they're pretty permanent. They are lightweight metal, so, you know, they're not gonna hold up to a ton of snow load or a ton of wind load. So I tend to use them for basically temporary structures, and that's what you're gonna see me use them on. This is gonna be three different videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this pipe bending tool to create these hoops. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to turn those hoops into cold frames. And we can use these hoops in all different ways. We can take these and add legs onto them and create taller structures, or we can leave them this height. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a low tunnel to extend my vegetable season, and I'm only gonna have four bolts on it. I'm gonna be able to take it apart, put it away when it gets too warm for it, and then put it right back out in the fall. But I'll show you in that second video how to also turn it into more of a permanent cold frame that would uh, last season after season and you could use all year long. You could take the plastic off of it and still grow inside of it without the plastic on it and then put the plastic back on it in the winter. In the third video, I'm gonna show you what would be more considered a greenhouse. I'm gonna build a new greenhouse here. And the difference being between a cold frame and a greenhouse would be that we're gonna climate control the greenhouse. I'll have ways to move air in it. I'll have ways to heat it. I'll have ways to cool it and that kind of thing. Whereas the cold frame, I'm really just trying to extend the season uh, one way or the other, you know, make it longer in the summer or uh, shorter in the winter. This pipe bender has three metal tabs right here that allow you to bolt it down to a table or something that's sturdy that won't move. It's got a piece on the end here that your pipe goes into that holds it in place while you bend it into these two, between these two metal pipes here, this little groove that's in that space right there. So it's gotta be bolted down to something and it's gotta be very sturdy because we're gonna be putting a lot of force on this as we conform these pipes to this shape. Like I said, the pipe we're gonna be using is actually a top rail from a chain link fence. You see these all over the place. You ever see the chain link fence? This is the little top rail that's running across the top of it. I think it's an inch and three eighths pipe. It's a pretty thin walled pipe, which allows us to manually bend it like we're about to do. There's a lot of different types of pipe benders. You can go and rent a more industrial pipe bender and bend very large pipes for you know, more permanent long range structures. Uh, this little manual one right here allows me to bend something about like this, anything heavier than this. I don't think that one would hold up very well. But like I said, this is pretty permanent. As long as you don't let the snow crush it or you don't end up with some sort of freak uh, windstorm at some point, you still had the plastic on it. These last a long time. Like I say, those hoops are 15 years old right there. They came off a house just a few weeks ago that I had never, ever, ever had a problem with it. So this is very long lasting. These cost about $12 and 50 cents a piece. That makes them about $25 for one 12 foot hoop. Cause I'm going to put two of these pieces together. And when I bend it around, I'll end up with about a 12 foot wide hoop. That pipe bender comes where you can make a 20 foot wide house. And I think you'd need three pipes for that. I have the 12 foot wide version. So I'm using two pipes and that's $25. And then there's a smaller version that allows you to build very, very narrow tunnels, about six feet in width. Uh, I think you probably need about one and a half pipes at that point. But anyway, each of these hoops is gonna end up costing me $50. The cold frame tunnel that I'm gonna do in the next video, I think I need four of these, plus I need a support piece to tie them together that's gonna be about two pieces long. So all in all, I'm gonna have about $150 in this little cold frame, which I'm gonna be able to keep permanently. I'll be able to put it away in a garage or put it away wherever and keep it hanging on a wall someplace and bring it back out twice a year. And as long as I don't let six inches of snow land on the top of it at any point, it'll last me forever. So the first thing I have to do is get that pipe bender screwed down to that table. I screwed that table to that fence so hopefully I can pull on it as hard as I need to pull on it and not pull away from that fence. And you need plenty of space, like what you see I'm working with right here. This is a 20 foot long pole that gets bent into a 12 foot wide hoop. So you need lots and lots of space to work with, but this is not that hard at all. I'll give you a close up 
after I get that thing tied down and I start bending on it. I have the pipe bender screwed down to the table. I'm going to go ahead and make the first bend on this pipe from a distance on the camera. You can see about how much force I have to put on it. This thin wall pipe isn't too bad, but you do have to pull on it pretty vigorously. And then I'll do the rest of this bending on a close-up shot. I don't put the two pipes together initially. I'll make a bend or two on that first one, and then I'll attach the second one to it to give me some more leverage. Just showing you about how much force that I have to use to get this. I have one hand on it. I have a glove on because it's 15 degrees outside, but I'll pull on it like this. I got just one hand, so it's not too bad. And I bend it right to the shape of that, and then I let it go, just like that. And then I slide it in a little bit more, and I bend it again to the shape of that. And then I slide it in a little bit more, and I bend it again to the shape of the pipe bender. Okay, I'm gonna give you a close-up view of what's going on there. Okay, so you can see I screwed it down to the table in those three spots, and then I initially stuck it in that end about six inches, and I can bend it until it touched right here. Do not go past this spot. You'll end up collapsing the pipe right here and bending it too much. The shape of this, if we bend it to the exact shape of this thing, we'd end up with an eight foot wide house. We're not actually trying to bend it to the exact shape of this. We're just bending it until it hits this and then meets some resistance. And then actually when it goes back, when it pops back, you can see it's really not quite that angle. That's not the angle we're bending it at. Um, we're getting it to there and letting it pop free. We're going in about six more inches, about six more inches over here and bending it to there. About six more inches, bending it to there. About six more inches. And then I haven't bent this part yet. So each time we go to there and we go in a little more. We want to touch this firmly, but not go past it. And now I've got to attach that second pipe to the end of it. Just to show you, these top rail pipes have a narrow spot on one end right there that slides into the next one. That's how these get attached together. After I'm finished with this, I'll end up putting a screw in them to hold them together. I'll show you that in the next video because that will also support the purlin, the piece that holds these in place. So we'll do that at the same time. But I'm just gonna slide this into the end of the other one and that'll give me some leverage to keep bending. Okay, so I'll slide this one onto the end of this one to gain that additional leverage. And then just continue with the same pattern. I'm going in about four or five, six inches, bending it to the shape. I did add a little support to this end over here. So as I push it in, it stays off the ground. This one came out perfect, but what I want you to notice is how much bigger this one is than the other ones I had over here. That's because I cut some off the other ones. I already had a wall built for the greenhouse that those were on. So if you want something this tall, you can keep the two full pieces together. I'm actually gonna come in here and trim some of the bottom off on both sides of these to match these other ones and then use them that way as a low tunnel. But if you want a house that's pretty much tall enough to walk into, uh, that's how it comes out with two pieces. And this is, you know, like I say, it's 12 feet, might be 13, something like that. But there you go. I have four or five of these for the cold frame and I'll have three or four of them for this little greenhouse going in over here. Any of the box stores have this top rail pipe. And like I say, it's about $12.50 in my area right now. Don't know what it'll be in your area. When I did those 15 years ago, they were like eight or $9. So they have come up a little bit, but still quite reasonable. This is a $25 hoop. If it was built out of any other type of uh, galvanized metal, I think it'd be substantially more than that. And I will link the pipe bending uh, tool in the description of this video if you're interested in getting one of those. Like I say, they have a 20 foot wide version, a 12 foot wide version, and a six, I think is what it was. But this 12 foot one, I've had this thing for, gosh, almost 20 years. And, and you pull it out once every three years or so, bend a couple pieces of pipe and put it away again. Uh, really super tool that'll last you forever. And uh, it, I think it's $50. So any rental of anything else would probably cost that in, in one time. 
Thank you very much for watching this video, and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the other two upcoming videos where I show you how to use these hoops in different types of configurations to either create a cold frame or a greenhouse.